So the topic which I will uh, want to uh, talk about here is uh, building customized Linux-based operating system using Malix script. And I am recognized by Tarun Kumar. I am a fi final year undergraduate student with electrical engineering as my core. And uh, I did GSOC in 2017, 2018. I was a mentor in uh, GCI 17, 18, Code Heat 17, and 18. You can find me with meetstutarun.github.io on Facebook, LinkedIn, GitHub, uh, with the same handle, meetstutarun. So Melix, uh, which I used for building the OS, so if we subset it, so Melix stands for beautiful and Alex loving it. So it's like uh, an operating system which is beautiful and everyone loves it. So the basic qualities of Melix, it's based on LXQT as the desktop environment. It's based on Ubuntu architecture. The basic philosophy behind this, it's very lightweight as compared to others. And the thing that makes different from other Linux distribution is that you are able to customize it. Talking customizing of Melix is through customizing and altering the codes. And you get a pre-configuration in Melix. There is a proper documentation with the help of which you are able to make certain changes in the operating system. There is a system lock feature, which we'll be described in the, uh, in the upcoming slides. So let's talk about uh, Melix generator. So I explained what is Melix. Melix is just an operating system. And we can make changes into it with the help of changing and altering the code. And there is a web app known as Melix Generator. So Melix Generator is just a web app, and it is made for all the users out there. They are not able to make changes in the code to make to customize their own OS. So we created Melix Generator with the help of which one just needs to go through this particular form and make changes to this particular form. And whatever changes he or she made it will get implemented in that particular Linux OS. So you don't need to customize the code, don't need to change the code. And at the end of the day, you are able to create your own customized Linux OS. So let me go through the form quickly. First, you need to have your email address on which you have to uh, put your email address. And there you get an ISO link at the end of the build. You have to name your distribution. So as you create your own distribution, you want it to name something special for yourself. There is a browser home page. There is a browser uh, search engine. So if you selected some browser to get installed in it, so you want that particular link to be the home page of that browser or that particular uh, link from which all, over, all the strings will be searched. That will be the browser search engine. And there is a 32-bit as well as 64-bit support. By default, if you didn't check this button, it would be 64-bit. And if you check it, you will get the OS into 34-bit. So we have support for both 32 as well as 64-bits. And there are some queries over here, like notification, screensaver, sleep modules. So if you check those ticks, so it would be like uh, you would be able to uh, see those features in that. And there is a third-party software like Chromium, Firefox. So if a person just wants that particular package in it, he will check it. And that only package will be installed. There is a logo. So you have to upload an SVG where you will, uh, you will find that particular logo for that OS. You, there is a wallpaper. So you just need to upload a background image that will be set as a wallpaper over the OS. And there is a desktop file. So you can upload here a zip file or a bunch of files that will be present on the desktop. Click on the build button, wait for 10 minutes, and you will get a link on your email with a ISO. Then you can uh, run it in VM, live boot it, and you will see all those features which you created here will be present in the operating system. So basically, what happens here, talking about a workshop, talking about uh, a conference, we have to set up the computer which is going to project, uh, the computer which is going to be used in the workshop with those particular settings which is needed for that workshop or conference. 
So just consider a scenario. There's a workshop, and the person is uh, going to have around 100 participants in the workshop. So a particular software, like something, is going to be needed throughout, uh, throughout all the computers. So that single person has to set up all those 100 computers with that particular software and that particular settings in the software. Our Malix can be a solution for him. So he can go through, uh, go through a single time setup. He can use Malix to generate uh, that particular ISO with all those desirable customizable settings which he wants all through all those uh, computers. So we have future plans how to set up uh, all those computers. We can use Ansible. Now this idea is not yet implemented. This is just uh, a perspective to, to implement in the future Malix. We can use Ansible, and with the help of SSH, we can put it run on all the computers throughout. So going through uh, all the, so this is a various is, is snapshots. So Melix generator was like this few uh, just one year before. It's around six months before, and currently it's like this. So Melix gives us a, a Melix generator gives us power to customize the OS. So we use Travis in the background in the in those ten minutes Melix generator triggers that particular Melix repository and Travis build it and deployed it on GitHub. We use a send grid to send the ISO link. Users can upload wallpapers, set up uh, packages, and customize it, and the ISO will be mailed to the user. So in the last GSOC, uh, I went through lots of milestones. But one of the important milestones is that uh, before that, it's just 32-bit. Uh, but now the system, most of the machines are 64-bit, and they require that particular 64-bit OS, so we are able to convert it into 64-bit just this year only. Okay, so the takeaways uh, for Malix generator is that we are able to generate uh, our own customized Linux distribution in around 10 to 15 minutes, even with our mobile phone also. We can generate OS for conferences, summits, and uh, workshops with all those desirable settings. We can, likewise, uh, our people, uh, my, one of my friends just saw my computer and he was just impressed by my workspace. Most of the uh, developers are here. They must uh, want to show their own computers to our, their friends or they may get impressed by seeing their workspace and they say, wow, how do you do that? What's, uh, what, uh, desktop flavor you are using, what is that uh, screen saver, or what is that uh, uh, terminal that you are using. So you can make all those changes, and you can generate an ISO and distribute it to your friend. Save for future. So you set up your own way of working on in a workspace in your computer, but somehow you find some bug and you have to should uh, have to remove all the things and reset the operating system. So it will, be ha it will be back straight to the original version. And you have to, again, uh, start, with the f start with the fresh operating system. You have to set up all those things in that. So you can set up your own operating system and then save it in the ISO format and Again, when you find some bugs, something, you don't need to go through the proper operating system. You can install that particular ISO, and it will have all those customizable settings. So there is few ideas that I would, uh, I would like uh, my fellow developers to implement. So we can use Ansible. We can uh, use Docker image. So now today, Malix is only usable to generate an ISO image. So what we are thinking, we can use uh, uh, virtual machine images. We can use Docker container for web-based interface. So the idea behind is that uh, we can use a uh, link. We can uh, use a link, and with the help of which the person just go to the link and find that way, find an uh, 
operate way to operate that operating system on that particular link and it will have all those features which uh, which is given by which is made customized by some other user so it's suppose that i give you link and uh, there is a there is a workshop and a person is there who just distributed a link and all those people directly go to the link with the help of internet our internet and find a workspace which is suitable for working in that work uh, shop okay so malix generator uh, and malix has some malix uh, add-ons so one of the important add-on is malix system log so basically in li uh, library uh, there are computers in computer centers there are very uh, there are computers and uh, people go there students go there and make dirty everything they d make dirty on the desktop they alternate the files they changes it they install their own uh, mis installation is not uh, given there so they make dirtiness over there they create folders they create files and then what the manager of that uh, computer center do they he went to all the computers over there and he cleans it so malik system log it's just with the help of this you just need to go you just need to enable that and uh, ask the students to attend that uh, lab lab and after the students leave that you just need to restart your computer and at the point at the instant when you just enable the system log it will go straight to that particular instance so all those changes which are made after enabling the system log will be vanished there is a package called as mu so basically uh, we are here and we are working on different uh, linux distributions someone works on debian some works on fedora someone on different different operating system so if you wanted uh, uh, someone work on uh, yum wants to uh, install some packages using yum some works uh, some uh, install using sudo install app get install so if in the case when you are not familiar with ubuntu you are just familiar with fedora you want to install some package for example yum install package 1 and if that particular package 1 exists it will automatically translate it to app get install package 1 and you are able to install that package so here are a few links uh, the first one is where the uh, the web app is deployed you can find it here the malix where the original iso is there this is the link for malix generator the web app where you will be able to find the web app source code this is the system log source code this is the mu system code uh, mu source code and this is the gitter channel where malix uh, discussions goes on so on the very first slide i went through this conversation so this is the idea behind that if we are able to customize an operating system and use that in that workshop i think there would be no problem if we turn off the screen saver feature if we turn off the notification feature and install all those requirements which are needed for in that particular workshop so no one needs to be take care that screen saver will not get on in the middle so these are the few people who were uh, starting with uh, development in this uh, project so you can find me here tarun this is harsh this is uh, my co developer in the past two from the past two years nico yao and andre these are the mentors which helped me able to do all these things without them it's not possible so i would like to thank uh, uh, on behalf of melix teams it's uh, my honor to represent melix and melix generator on behalf of melix team thank you 
I hope it makes some sense out of these 20 minutes. Uh, so I welcome all the questions from your side. Yes. System lock uh, is basically just uh, a JS-based code. Okay. Yeah, there is a little Python there. So what we do, we in the in the Windows, if you use Windows, there is a system restore point. Yeah. The, there is a way to create the system restore point. Yeah. So you, when you create that point, or uh, it's similar like uh, it's cre uh, in Windows, there is a uh, drive C D E. So C drive will get restored, that restored to that particular point. So we use uh, exactly the same philosophy there. In the system lock, as, uh, as soon as we turn on that uh, particular system lock feature, we fix to that particular instance. And all the changes made after that enabling of the system lock Will, will not be the permanent changes. That will be temporary changes. And that will switch again to that instance after restarting the system. Okay. So does that only apply to user home directories, or, but, or also uh, like uh, For the timing, user's home directory. Okay. Yeah, for the timing. Because, so, uh, yes? So, so the logs and any patches are made, or system configuration, every, the system log has been enabled, uh, will be. Yeah, that will be maintained. Only the changes made in the home directory will be vanished. Okay. Yeah, be because uh, it it is designed basically for workshops like and laboratory like things. So when uh, a person goes there, I went. I also went in labs. So I see that people make dirtiness on desktop, and they make changes the file. They may also uh, delete the important files, and they may also create their own dirtiness on the desktop. So, and the instructor of the lab then goes to each and every computer and then cleans it for the next, next batch to come again. So he do, he, that's a solution, he don't need to do that, he just need to restart the system and it will get inst uh, again to that particular instance. Okay. Yes. The ability for the user to take their home directories home with them, say on a thumb drive or on a remote backup. So the next time they come to the session, they can restore all their files and continue working from where they left off. Yeah, uh, yeah. So w why co why just for home directory? Why not the whole workspace? Uh, yeah, the whole workspace. Yeah, that would be much better, no? The whole workspace, uh, which has all those uh, configurations, all those packages, all those desirable settings which you wanted to work for. Just suppose you forget your laptop in your home, and you need to do some work. Uh, you need to edit some slides. You need to edit some documents on a system which is not uh, particular of yours. Yeah. And uh, using some other systems make you feel that, oh, this is not. Uh, I'm not uh, able to do that because it's uh, I'm not uh, uh, have uh, able to do that. So you just uh, have your pen drive, uh, your flash drive. You put it in, and exactly you get the same desktop screen that you have on your laptop. But I would need to boot from the from the thumb drive, right? Y yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. So, so basically, what I get, you locked your so people doesn't able to use the pen drive. Uh, they yes. Boot. They get not uh, boot. Live boot, that also not possible. Yes, correct. 
yeah so the the solution to that that i thought is here we want to build docker containers for web based interface okay. so yeah so you just get an uh, address you have to go th to that particular address with the uh, on a browser you are able to have you have internet connection on your computer and go to that particular link and there you will find uh, the interface which is similar to your working space computer it depends it depends uh, on the internet speed. It depends the packages you are accessing. So if the package is heavier, it would take time. But for the lightweight packages, and just for the convenience of us, for the convenience of us of in working that particular space, can be a solution to your issue. Did you get my point? Yes. Yeah, why are we putting up? It, it looks for a USB. If, if a USB hard disk uh, plugged in, as an example, if it is plugged in, then change the amount of the home to the USB automatically. Good I idea. mean, is that a possible thing? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a possible thing. That's a good idea. Yeah, so yeah, changing the amount to? To the USB. Rather than home. Rather than the hard disk. To, OK, OK. And uh, that uh, needs to be changed from BIOS. Uh, no. Changing. Uh, no. Uh, so I, asked, I asked Linda to booting out. Mm -hmm. And uh, it checks whether there's a USB drive plugged in. And maybe in the, in the uh, USB drive, there's like a dot file, dot melix home. If that exists, then automatically the home directory and the workspace points to the pen drive. Yeah, so we can set the priority over there, first look on the uh, USB, if there is something to boot, then boot it from there. Otherwise, go straight to the hard drive. Yes, sir. So, not booting, not booting. Only configure the home directory. Okay. 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 So these these changes can uh, can be made through. Okay. Yeah, this can be a solution. Just for yeah. Okay, so uh, our working space will be from the hard drive, but the home directory, if present in the pen drive, will be copied straight to the. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be copied. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's used yeah, directly. it's used directly, not yeah. copied. Yes, it will be used directly. Yeah, this can. We can use that uh, uh, idea too. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I can help uh, others means uh, to implement this also. So for and for the web-based interface, will it be a solution for your uh, use in, case? In some cases, it, it it won't work for us because in many cases uh, where we have kiosks, uh, internet is not very good. Yes. Okay, and uh, booting from pen drive, where, yes. Like, it, hmm. it can be uh, a solution for other people, but then for me personally, and, and my use cases, um, okay. it, is a, uh, it is a limited use case. Okay, and uh, in the case where booting from pen drive is possible, means they haven't locked the system. Yes. So we can use in that case uh, our own personalized distribution. Yes. Yeah. 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 So in those uh, particular case where the works uh, work systems are locked, uh, you are not able to boot from pen drive. Yeah. You have to be with that particular yeah. feature. 
Okay, I get something to learn here also. Thank you. Uh, any more questions? What is the home? With this uh, OS, hardware like generation one. Yeah, it's 4.9 right now. Yeah, I have that image. So sorry, 4.4. .4. It's working on 4.4. .4. But uh, Sarah has asked about uh, the hardware. So it's basic. Uh, so I tested it on uh, on a machine which has around 512 uh, 12 GB of RAM, and uh, it works on Intel uh, Intel Platinum Core 2 Duo, the oldest. Yes, 500 megabyte of RAM. And Intel Platinum Core 2 Duo. I booted live boot the system. Doesn't install on it, and. Uh, the phys the memo the hard drive is around uh, yes yeah yeah so so it's uh, it's completely lightweight uh, you, if you get through get through the link here get through this particular link uh, of malix so this is the root link you will find everything here so you will able to find all those packages which are inside that and uh, if you find that okay, this is pa this is the package that I don't need it. There are a few packages which are already installed in here, and you can just remove that. And it's very lightweight. So yes. Yeah, comfortably. Hmm. So uh, our next task is uh, like. Uh, all those operating systems uh, today have some personal assistant over there. So Fossetia wants to implement uh, their own SUSE based desktop. So a desktop which has SUSE as their, person, uh, as their personal assistant and it can be used to make uh, user, exp user interface more and more personalized and uh, so it gives uh, suggestions based on the based on the work uh, past past experience. So any more questions? Yeah, it's really thankful. I am very thankful to everyone, and this is a great talk. And I am also able to learn lots of things. Thank you.